Hello, and welcome to Monumental, where we sit down with entrepreneurs, leaders, visionaries, and big thinkers making monumental change. Here's your host, Evan Holliday. Welcome to Monumental. I'm your host, Evan Holliday, and today we have on the show with us Mark Podolsky. Mark, great to have you on the show. How are you doing? Evan, pulse is normal. Respiration is fine. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so a little bit about Mark before we jump on. Uh, I, I was telling Mark earlier, I've seen his, his content for years. He's done an amazing job of putting out content, quality content. Uh, and he is known as the land geek. So I love that partially because I'm a developer. I do a lot of work uh, with land. And I'm also very geeky about real estate. So I love that. Um, So Mark is widely considered to be the country's most trusted and foremost authority on buying and selling raw, undeveloped land. Today, Mark will share his journey into the world of buying, selling, and leasing raw land as an investment. He has actively invested in real estate and raw land for almost 20 years and has completed over 5,000 unique transactions in that time. That's pretty impressive, Mark. Um, let's dive into the very beginning and kind of how you got started. Sure, sure. So in the beginning, I was a overworked, overstressed, micromanaged, 45-minute commute to work and back uh, employee. I was doing uh, investment banking, specializing in mergers and acquisitions with private equity groups. And Evan, it got so bad for me that I wouldn't get the Sunday blues anticipating Monday coming around, I'd get the Friday blues, anticipating the weekend going by really fast and having to be back at work on Monday. So my firm hires this guy and he's telling me that as a side hustle, he's going to these tax deed auctions, he's buying up raw land, pennies on the dollar, and he's flipping them online and he's making an average of a 300% return on his investment. Well, I'm looking at companies all day long and a great company, great company has an average EBITDA or free cash flow of 15%. Your average company, uh, it's a great company, is 15%. Average company is 10%. And I'm looking at companies all day long, less than 10%. So of course, yeah. I don't believe them. And <laughs> I've got three grand saved up for car repairs. I go to New Mexico with him. I do exactly what he says. I buy up 10 half acre parcels, average price of $300 each. Wow. And I flip them online. They all sell for an average price of $1,200 each. 300%, it worked. So I took all that money, went to another auction in Arizona, which is where I live. And again, this is 2000, there's no one in the room. I'm buying up lots, I'm buying up acreage for like nothing. And I flip all that online and I made over $90,000 cash. So I'd go to my wife, I'm like, honey, I'm gonna quit my job. I'm gonna become a full-time land investor. And she, she's like, absolutely not. <laughs> so I said, okay, okay. So it took me about 18 months of land investing part-time to exceed the investment banking income. And then I quit and I've been doing it full-time ever since. And and I love it. That's amazing. Um, Did you have kids or family when when you went full-time into land investing? I had a six-month-old. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, you know, the jury's still out whether or not it's a good thing for my kids that I've been around all this time, <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. We'll take a pause. Like, selfishly, it's good for me. Uh, yeah. We'll, we'll have them on the podcast yeah. in, in a couple of years. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so going into 2000, you know, like you said, I mean, that was the, the stock, you know, the, the internet bust uh, at that point. Um, it, as far as buying land, and then selling it, you know, you said up to three times the value online. How were you going about doing that? Really, I was, you know, just buying them at tax deed auction. I was flipping them on websites like eBay or bidforassets.com. Now, my strategy changed um, about three years in. I can walk you through what I do, ex- what, exactly what I do now, how I get deals, how I get them 25, 30 cents a dollar, and how I sell them so that I make a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. So my goal, Evan, is when you get done with this, you're like, screw multifamily. It's way too difficult. <laughs> yeah, why develop it? Mark Let's... does. Yeah. 
No, I love this, it. honestly though, this this is a nice gateway drug into doing syndications and bigger deals um, if you're just getting started. So, um, so Evan, where do you live? Uh, Nashville. You're Nashville. Okay, so let's pretend that you own 20 acres of raw land in Texas. Okay. And you owe $200 in back taxes. So Evan, you're basically advertising two things to me. Number one, you have no emotional attachment to that raw land. You live in Nashville, properties in Texas. Number two, you're distressed financially in some way because you haven't paid your property taxes. And as a result, when we don't pay for things, we don't value them in the same way. And the county treasurer has been sending you notices every single month. Evan, if you don't pay your property taxes, we're going to auction off that 20-acre parcel to a tax deed or a tax lien investor. So what I'll do is I will look at the, co the, the comparable sales on that parcel in mm -hmm. Texas for the last, let's say, 12 to 18 months. And let's say that the lowest comp is 10 grand. All I'm going to do is divide by four. And that's going to get me what Warren Buffett would call a 300% margin of safety. So I'm going to send you an actual offer of that on that property of $2,500. Hmm. Now you accept it because for you, $2,500 is better than nothing. In reality, three to 5% of people accept my quote unquote top dollar offer. Hmm. So now that you've accepted it, I've got to go through due diligence or this in-depth research. Number one, I got to confirm you still own the property. Number two, I got to confirm back taxes are only $200. Number three, I have to make sure there's been no breaks in the chain of title. Number four, there needs to be uh, ingress and egress, legal access. And I have this whole property due diligence checklist that my team in the Philippines handles for me. They're connected to an American title company. And in the meantime, they're getting the plat maps, the GIS maps, aerial maps, everything that a buyer would want to know about that property as well. So everything checks out. And I send you a check for $2,300, $200 goes to the county to pay your back taxes. I'm all in for $2,500. Now, I'm going to sell this property in 30 days or less. You know how I'm going to do it? How's that? I have a built-in best buyer. Do you know who it is? No. The neighbors. Ah. The neighbors. So I'm like going to send out neighbor, neighbor letters saying, hey, here's your opportunity expand your holdings, protect your privacy, protect your views, know who your neighbor's going to be. So oftentimes the neighbors will buy it before it goes to the open market. Now, if they pass, I'll go to my buyer's list. My buyer's list passes. I'll go to a little website you've probably never heard of called Craigslist, 10th most trafficked website in the United States. I go to a smaller one. You've probably heard of this one called Facebook. I go to the groups and the marketplace. Um, and then from there, I'll go to the lands, landmoto.com landandfarm.com, landflip.com, landhub.com, landsofamerica.com. There's, there's a lot of them. There's a platform. Yeah, that interesting. Buy and sell raw land. So, the, but the way that I'm going to sell it is I'm going to make it irresistible. So this 10-acre parcel, all I'm going to do is ask for a $2,500 down payment. I'm going to owner finance the balance. So let's say, let's make it a car payment, $449 a month, 9% interest the next 84 months. So I'm going to get my capital out on the down. I might go six months out. And then I've got passive income of $449 a month at 9% interest over the next 84 months, no renters, no rehabs, no renovations, no roads. Because I'm not dealing with the tenant, I'm exempt from Dodd-Frank, RESPA, and the SAFE Act. So Evan, the game we play then is can we create enough of these land, mo the land notes where our passive income exceeds our fixed expenses, and now we're working because we want to, not because we have to. I love it. Got it boiled down to a science. Um, so walk us through the very early stage. Let's say one of our listeners is like, yes, Mark, this is, this is me. I see value there. Um, I love what this is. How can, I, how can I basically start off picking my market? And what, what kind of deal am I looking for because there's a lot of different types of land. How do I narrow that down? That's a great question. You know, you're talking about 3,007 U.S. counties. So what are the best counties to go to? Yeah. And I mean, Evan, let's just be honest. Like nobody wakes up and thinks to themselves, boy, I'd like some raw land today in Iowa. <laughs> Unless you live in Iowa. Yeah. So we want to focus on the sunshine states, 
So I focus on New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, Nevada, California, uh, a little bit Oregon, Washington, Texas. These are these fast growing states in the Southwest, the West, a little bit in Northwest. And then you got Florida as well. I pretty much ignore the rest of the country. Now, don't get me wrong. I've done deals in Oklahoma and Arkansas, Tennessee, um, <clears throat> New York. But for the most part, that's really where I want to focus on. And because it's such a huge market, we I mean, are talking about billions of acres available yeah. and no big players. I mean, there's literally no private equity groups. There's no hedge funds. There's no big money in the space. There's really no competition, uh, basically. And, it's, and let's face it, it's a, it's, a, it's a geeky niche. I mean, if you go to a RIA meeting, there's 100 people in that meeting. 99 of them are house slippers, yeah. landlords, and wholesalers. You and I would be the only land guys there. And it's not sexy. Like DIY Network, HGTV, they, they called me and said, hey, Mark, do a show on Flip This Land. The before picture is raw land. The after picture is raw land. Like yeah. it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. And, and so, you know, 90% of this business is automated with software, inexpensive virtual assistants. And I don't even go see the properties. So you're not physically tied down to any location. And so therefore it scales virtually as well. So is there any part, like any type of land that makes the most sense, like any, any size or price, like kind of criteria to look for? Really? I'll buy, I'll buy any asset. I'm pretty opportunistic, 25, 30 cents on the dollar from a postage stamp to a section of 640 acres. So I'm really going to look at, can I get a good deal? I mean, if, if I had my, my choice and I could say like, there's like a, a land ferry, I would wish for Nevada 40 acres all day long. Um, I mean, those, those have been great. Why, but, why 40 acres in Nevada? Well, that was one of my first deals. And um, I made like $5 million on this one deal. Wow. Just, you know, buying 640 acre sections, subdividing them into 40s <clears throat> and selling them off. And uh, I, I just, I just, I mean, I love 40s and people love 40s. It's not too big, but it's like, I've got a ranch. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So is your, your typical buyer or your, at least your first choice of the buyer is the, the neighbors. Right. The neighbors. So absolutely. But there is a pig for every barn. And I really think that I've never been stuck with a piece of raw land. So I, I really think that it's just all in the marketing of it and in finding that, that buyer that, you know, is for, in some way resonates with that, that land. But there's a lust for land in this country that most people don't realize. So um, as far as going through that process, it sounds like you're really not on the hook for too much of an investment up front um, until, until you go through your due diligence, you know that everything checks out, uh, what you're having, hopefully having a team run through on your behalf. Um, and then, yeah, and then, I, yeah, I'd say our average deal, we, we pay it 1800 for it and we sell it for 7,900 to, to 10 grand on terms. Wow. Those, those are our singles all day long. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so these are typically like, like more infill lots, uh, single family lots that like, basically surrounding homes all around it. And then, is that right? Yeah. See, you're, you're thinking like a developer. I'm, I'm going about an hour or two outside the nearest city. Oh, so in, okay. in fill lots, are, it's a great strategy. However, it's, it's going to be a little bit more competitive and way, mm -hmm. way more higher priced. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and, and so how are you, you're finding the land by, by going through and seeing who is back taxes and who's out of state. Is that right? Yeah, that's our lowest hanging fruit. Once I determine that this is a good market, I'll go to the county assessor. I'll, I will literally get a list of all the people that own real property in that county. And then we'll, we'll scrub that list. And we'll, let's say by use code VL. So now we just have the vacant landowners. Yeah. We'll send everybody an offer. We use software to do that. That's awesome. And, and how long have you been doing this? Oh gosh. So 20 years now. Wow. Um, and what, what, when you're working with your students in the Lane Geek Academy, 
um, what is typically like your first steps to get them started and kind of get them the momentum they need to, to purchase their own land? Yeah. So, you know, the, really what we want to do is, um, have you heard of the, the seven minute workout? No, walk me through it. Okay. So there's, so there's an app called the seven minute workout and it's like for seven minutes you work out and it's intense. There's no, there's no rest, but for seven minutes, anyone can kind of wrap their head around. Yeah. I can get this workout done and at least I've done something. So we sort of take the same approach in our, in our training methodology where we, we really walk them through your county research and then we want you to send out 20 offers a day every single day and just get into the habit of sending out offers. And then from there, we eat the elephant one bite at a time and kind of walk everybody through how to do due diligence. And so we have, you know, different methodologies on doing that, but, but essentially it's, it's just breaking out each piece of the business into, into easy action steps so that you'll do it and you're not overwhelmed. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I think that really, applies to most everything people are trying to accomplish is they forget to break things down into easy, manageable bite-sized pieces. Um, even if it is a, a big, big goal. Um, so yeah. I, I love that you bring that up and, and I love the 20, 20 offers per day. That, that seems like a lot, but maybe it's not. No, I mean, you could do that in less than 30 minutes. If you're automating like we are, it takes about a minute. So I love it. You just press a button and it's done and you got your offers out for the day. And then when the due diligence comes back, you're not overwhelmed either with having to go back and, and talk to these sellers and, and start that process as well. So it's, it's just like anything, you know, your mind will start running away with it. Like you start imagining every single step you need to do. If yeah. I was going to buy a multifamily building, I'd be so overwhelmed with, with it all. I would just be like, ah. Eh. <laughs> ATM investing, right? Yeah. I'm on to the next thing. Yeah. So um, this is a, an easier way to to start uh, getting involved in professional land investing because you have somebody who's seasoned and done it and will make sure you're not going to get hurt. You're not going to lose your capital. And so you have confidence in that piece, but also that you're not going to let your life or yourself get in the way and that you can take these easy action steps to do the things that actually move the needle yeah. uh, in the business. I love it. Um, and it, as far as it sounded like you had a, um, someone showing you a little bit of, of kind of the ropes when you were getting started, how did that having that mentorship help you um, getting into the land investment game? Well, I mean, really it was everything. Um, I wish he was more of a mentor. He, he really, uh, you know, it was kind of like a blind lead in the blind uh, because he was just like a little ahead of me. Yeah. So I, I, I wish I had uh, more of a mentor. I, I made million dollar mistakes along the way because I didn't have a mentor. I, I really wish I did. Um, I did get a business mentor and uh, he really helped me, you know, kind of look at what I was doing and said, Mark, great job, better job than what you had but it's still a job and he really helped me create an actual business so that I can travel around the world and this passive income machine continues spitting out passive income. That's amazing. Without my doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's, it's, I think reminds me of um, Ray Dalio's principles book. He talks about like just removing yourself from the machine and allowing the machine, you know, building the machine up to where it can operate on its own um, and really, be able to, you can step out, do live your life, you live your lifestyle, have your impact. Um, and I, so I applaud you for that. As far as, as getting to that point, what do you think has helped you? Um, what, what do you think has helped you most get to that point? Definitely my mentor. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I definitely had superhero syndrome. I thought, Oh, there's no one that's going to be able to do any aspect of this business as well as me. Yeah. And he was like, no, He's like, you're not that special. <laughs> and so, you know, he, he really helped me step by step um, do that and forced me to do that. Uh, it wasn't like turning on a light switch. I mean, I, yeah. I did it kicking and screaming. Um, you know, our clients, it takes about a year to kind of get that machine built. It took me five. 
I was very slow and stubborn. Yeah. I love the, uh, the authenticity and the transparency. Um, I think you're exactly right. Like it, it takes, um, being transparent with yourself, looking introspectively at your business and being intentional about setting up systems and setting up the machine. So that way you can empower others to, to delegate these tasks. So that way other people can take them and run with them and empower those employees or other team members um, to really grow your business. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you mentioned it takes about a year um, for someone to, to really, is that to, to buy their first piece of land or get the systems up and up in place? Oh yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's to get the machine built. Um, I would say it takes about six weeks actually go through a, a, a full cycle deal. I love it. Um, as far as what we talked about, but right before we jumped on, um, as far as COVID-19 coronavirus, how is that affecting the, the market for land right now? Yeah, so we're getting a bump. I mean, we sold seven properties last week. Um, this week, we're filming this on a Wednesday. We're, we've sold, uh, I think, three. We've got another one pending. So, you know, when the stock market does what it's, what it's doing, yeah, and you have so much uncertainty, you know, you, you read, you know, Goldman Sachs is saying, hey, to their top clients, buy gold. Why are they saying buy gold? Because it's a real asset. And they're not saying buy gold stocks. They're saying buy gold. And so there's always going to be a flight to real assets and land, real estate, gold. These are real assets. Um, you don't see the day-to-day -day, uh, ups and downs of uh, the volatility of, of a market when you have uncertainty like we're like you know we have globally right now. And then land has historically been a hedge against inflation, as well as other uh, commodities. And then you also have the the part where when you have rural land like what I have, you have a, a, like a million preppers in this country. These are people that are hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. They want a piece of raw land to bug out to. And so we're, just, you know, we're, we're right up there with Kleenex and Purell and, and, Zoom. And, toilet, and, and toilet paper. So as far as things people want. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I think if you, if you found that niche within, you know, it's land, you know, like you said, the, the parcels where you're out in the suburbs or out in the middle of, you know, outside of the city. And you're exactly right. I mean, that's, you know, and also think about long-term, like cities are growing out that direction. Um, so inevitably, you know, long-term you're playing a game that is only going to get in higher demand. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so as far as, uh, you know, taking this plan and saying, okay, I want to, Mark, I want to do like what you did. I want to get to a point where I can get the passive income from these land deals and leave my job, leave my W-2 and find that freedom um, so I can really make my own impact in the world. How, how would our listeners go about doing that? Yeah, so I think the, the best place to start is, you know, get some training. And I'd love to offer your listeners a free course. I mean, it's, it's normally $97, but I'd love to offer your listeners a, uh, the Passive Income Launch Kit course for free. So if they just go to landgeek.com forward slash launch kit, uh, they can get this course for free and see if this niche even resonates with them or not and start doing it. I love it. Um, and as far as you said, each basically setting it up with like you're doing basically seller financing. So you're offering that to the people that you're selling it to. Um, what, what terms do you typically give? Like, is there a certain length on each of those? Yeah. I mean, it just depends on the total price of the property, but we want to keep it at about a car payment. Okay. So anywhere from 99 to, you know, Four ninety nine a month. Yeah, that makes sense. And then um, you really your goal is to figure out what that number is that they want to hit uh, as far as passive income, so that way they can feel comfortable leaving their job, leaving their W two, whatever it is their goal is, um, and then figuring out how many of those units they need to, or 
I guess, pieces of land that they need to, to get to that. Yeah, absolutely. We, we really urge all our clients the next 12 to 18 months to get to a minimum of $10,000 a month in passive income. And so following that model and, you know, working that system, that's, that's really our expectation. That's great. That's awesome. Um, well, as far as uh, the really getting to where you are now, um, what is that passive income that kind of what you mentioned earlier, like being able to get out of the machine and build up the machine so it operates uh, very efficiently? What has that unlocked your time to be able to do? Yeah, so I work about an hour a week in Frontier Properties. And, you know, that hour consists of just having meetings with the team and looking at numbers. Um, how many offers went out this week? How many deals uh, are we pending? How many deals did we close? And, and, just, and then it's really my job every day is to think. And I really feel bad for my team after I've had a cup of coffee. Because if I, you know, I might Vox them using this Voxer app and say, hey, have we thought about doing this? So I, I usually, you know, something's working, then I'll go ahead and break it. And they hate that. <laughs> but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But that's, that's really my, my main role. So it allows me to think strategically in ways that um, I would not have been able to do if I was doing working in the business. Yeah. So working on the business as a CEO, my main role is how do we make things better and, and look for other opportunities. But my day, my week is themed. So Mondays and Fridays, um, I do nothing. Um, I call my terminal days. I pretend if this is my last day on earth, how would I want to spend it? I mean, typically it's, you know, spending time with my family and my wife. We'd go for coffee or lunch or breakfast and take the kids to school when there was school. Um, <laughs> yeah. Now, now it's a little bit more weird, but yeah, you know, spending time with them and, and doing that, all that. So by the end of the day, I can, my head hits the pillow. I'm like, well, I could die in peace after, you know, this day, you know, hanging out with friends and family um, and just really focusing on making those relationships stronger. Tuesday, I have a, a podcast that um, art of passive income podcast. That's my day to record podcasts. Um, Wednesday is my team meeting days uh, for all the other uh, companies. And then Thursdays are client days where I, I'll, spend time with my clients and then, you know, Friday and do it again. So I'd like to do what I like to do. I love it. That's awesome. Um, and I love how you have a, a theme for uh, intention behind your time and, and your days and, and being able to spend it on what you really want to be spending it on instead of being, you know, knees deep and, and working in the business instead of, like you said, on the business. Yeah, absolutely. So as far as what, what excites you right now, as far as your company, your growth, your impact, what, what are you thinking about? What opportunities are you thinking about um, as you're, like you said, spending all that time thinking on your business? So, you know, as we're going through COVID-19 and I have thousands upon thousands of acres of, of land throughout the United States, I was thinking that, well, if we're going to be in a new world and global pandemics are saying this is not ending, like these will be coming up more frequently with climate change. Yeah. Well, wouldn't it be nice if we had a sort of a timeshare model with our raw land where we put up these sort of uh, prepper cottages six feet apart. We had prepper food in them um, and people could just, you know, make a very low sort of monthly payment where like an insurance payment, yeah. like let's say 20 to $50 a month, where if need be, they have this place that they could go to, to bug out to with everything they would need. And they would be guaranteed, you know, two to three months, like that's their place and something like that. So we're looking at those types of opportunities. Um, I started a, a SaaS business called geekpay.io, which is a set and forget it um, payment system to automate hmm. getting paid via ACH. But if the ACH fails, then it'll hit the credit card on file. So we're really working on, on growing that into other verticals besides just land investing. 
And um, so that's a fun challenge as well. I'm working on my second book. Uh, the first book was Dirt Rich. Um, the companion book to that is going to be, um, you know, how to scale your, your land business, essentially. Um, so I'm working on that as well. So I'm, I'm keeping busy. I'm staying out of trouble, Evan. Don't worry about me. <laughs> oh, I wasn't worried at all. You're, uh, I know that you're using this as an opportunity to not only expand, but massively expand throughout COVID-19 and, and um, not looking at it as a time for retraction. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's not that we want to um, be opportunistic in the sense like I want, I want to just take yeah. advantage of people during COVID-19, but the reality of the market is that, you know, people have this land they're not going to go to, they're not going to use, and I'm giving them an opportunity to cash out of their land and use that money in more productive ways. And, you know, it's like, it's like looking at, you know, what do, what do you have in your garage right now? Yeah. And I guarantee if I sent you an offer, 25, 30 cents a dollar on the stuff in your garage you're not using, you'd be thankful for it. Yeah. So, and also ooh, li liquidity, yeah. like you said, it's, yeah, exactly. You're providing you liquidity use, right now where it's really very valuable to people. Yeah, absolutely. And then we're helping our counties out so they could provide hospitals and schools, um, and serve their communities because we're getting people in there. They're going to pay their property taxes. And then once we find that, that buyer now people that thought, Oh, here's a real asset that I can afford that they never thought they could even afford. And then it's only limited by their imagination. So there's value all along the line. I love it. Yeah. I think that's a, the highest level of value you can provide is when everybody is gaining from it. Um, and there's value on all sides. I love it. Um, well, as far as is kind of one lasting piece of advice that you would leave with our listeners, um, what do you think that would be? I love this quote by Zig Ziglar. If you'll do for the next three to five years, what other people won't do, you'll be able to do for the rest of your life, what other people can't do. And uh, a good example of this is, uh, I just had him on my podcast, uh, Drew Karanovich. So he started with our do-it-yourself program, this investor's toolkit. And, it, it, you know, he had a full-time job, but he chipped away, chipped away, chipped away. And young guy, and four years later, his passive income is 25000 a month. And so we did the numbers on this. And so just from a net worth standpoint, if you take 25000 times 12, He's making 300000 a year, not having to do anything. And then we divide that by 0.02. That gets us to $15 million. So if Drew went to his bank and said, I'm going to put $15 million in the bank at a very aggressive today, 2% interest, yeah. it would throw off $300,000 a year. So he was able to do that in four years. Yeah. Imagine if you had a full-time job, how long would it take you to squirrel away $15 million to throw off that type of passive income. Yeah, never. And most people would never get there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. I like that a lot, how you're, you're basically saying, hey, what is the equivalent of if you were to actually save that amount of money? You know, it's, it's tremendous. Um, that's the power of, of compounded passive income. Uh, it, really, yeah. it really is. It, it's a game changer. Yeah. So he quit his job. He's got a young son at home. He's spending his time full time with his wife and child. And, yeah. and, you know, literally he solved two of the biggest problems in life, the money problem, but more importantly, the time problem. Yeah. So now I can work when he wants, where he wants and with whom he wants. And I think once we get to that point, we can really think about moving up Maslow's hierarchy of needs into self-actualization yeah. and figuring out what do I really want to do in life? Yeah. I love that. Um, so the, the last question before we jump into our monumental questions, um, I just got to ask if you get any pieces of land for multifamily, you call me first. Okay. So, <laughs> I love it. I just threw away Joe Fairless's number. Nice. Nice. I love it. No um, so, Let's jump into our monumental questions. What does success mean to you? 
So success means to me that at the end of my life, I was a good ancestor because let's, let's face it, whatever I do in this life, um, it's going to be forgotten in three generations. No matter what I accomplish, no matter what I don't accomplish. Three generations, no one's going to remember me. Yeah. But what I would like to think is that have I lived in a way where I've modeled for my family, my, my friends, my colleagues, other people, a, a life that is, is one that uh, is worth modeling and would be able to uh, filter down to the generations yeah. where that, that idea of I don't have to be a slave. Um, I can live the way that I want to live. I can live my best, most intentional life. Yeah. Um, makes a, a, an impact. And, and all, ultimately, at the end of the day, my focus being that, you know, the number one priority of my life is the quality of my relationships. Will that filter down and, and make an impact? That's awesome. I really like that a lot. Um, that reminds me of, uh, there's a, basically Indians had always looked at decisions they would make as a tribe and say, you know, what are the impacts of these decisions for seven generations? Um, and that's how they made decisions was thinking about 250 years out and all the generations that we're going to affect by doing this. And I think having that exactly what you're saying, like that long-term approach to how we're saying, uh, how are we modeling our life for our generation so that they can live a better life so that their kids can live a better life. So their kids, you know, on and on and on, because you really do have that effect on those around you. And, you know, they're, they're mirroring you, they're watching you, they're learning from you. And you're exactly right. The quality of relationships is really, really powerful. Yeah. I mean, we, we all know the really, you know, conventionally successful person that's divorced, overweight, and his kids won't talk to him. <laughs> what? I've never heard of that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so what about uh, daily habits or morning rituals? So uh, my daily habit is uh, I meditate every day, 20 minutes a day on the waking up app. Um, another thing I left to do is I, I work out six days a week. Um, I've got the Peloton and then I have, uh, you know, personal training I like to go to and I have a TRX, but ultimately, um, I want the things in life that money can't buy. So money can't buy me a calm mind. Money can't buy me a fit body and money can't buy me a house full of love. Yeah. So any of those rituals are, are all my rituals are going to be geared towards those, um, those three things. Yeah, that's awesome. Guys, write that down. Uh, I think that's, that's a big nugget of like everything, everything Mark's saying right now is, is very lined up with being true to yourself, your center self. Um, and, and like you said earlier, like working your way up to Maslow's hierarchy of needs and, and finding your self-actualized self. Um, because that's ultimately what we're, what we're doing all this for, it, you know, that's the ultimate goal. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what about favorite book or book you're currently reading? So I've got two favorite business books that I think if you combine them, they're really powerful. Um, you know, the one thing by Gary Keller oh, yeah. and Jay Hobson, and you combine that with, uh, I think it's Brian Moran's, the 12 week year. Uh, I think those are really great books, especially to, to get in that mindset of scaling and growing. Yeah. Uh, and then just as far as what I'm currently reading, um, I mean, you know, since we've been on lockdown, I, I've, I picked <laughs> up uh, infinite jest. I don't know. David Foster Wallace, that book <laughs> is insane. Um, and then what else? What, what other book did I just, read I really liked. Well, oh, The Second Mountain by David Brooks. I really liked that book. That was great. Um, the Hard Thing About Hard Things is great. Uh, the Stoic Challenge of William B. Irvine is, has, was really good. Solve for Happy, Moga Dat was good. Um, and then uh, I love uh, the uh, this book by Cal Newport, Deep Work. Oh yeah. Yeah. I just read that one recently. Actually, that was, 
that was powerful because it, it talks all about getting into that deep space where, like you said, you're, you're spending your time thinking and, and adding massive value and not doing tedious things that are, get you off track and sidetrack you. Yeah, exactly. I love it, Mark. Um, Mark, I'm, I'm really, really happy to have you on the show, uh, bringing massive value to our monumental listeners and where can our monumental listeners follow you or reach out to you or connect with you? Yeah, again, I think the best place to go is thelandgeek.com. And if they want to get the $97 passive income launch kit course, just go to thelandgeek.com forward slash launch kit. I love it. Guys, take Mark up on that. Uh, and if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to go on social media, tag Mark, tag me, let us know you're listening. And if you also, if you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to rate and review Monumental on iTunes or wherever you're listening right now. And guys, with that, have a monumental day. Mm -hmm.